हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी एंड वॉट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोफोरसिस लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम सो इन द रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम नंबर थ्री अ साइंटिस्ट हैज आइसोलेटेड अ यूनिक प्रोटीन ए रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर इंडक्शन ऑफ अपोप्टोसिस इन द सेल ही सस्पेक्ट्स दैट द प्रोटीन ए might be interacting with the dna polymerase and the disturb its replication now we want to design the experiment to study the interaction of the dna polymerase with the pro protein so here the protein a is interacting or at least it is suspecting that protein a is interacting with the dna polymerase so dna polymerase is an enzyme which is actually is taking part into the replication or it is responsible for the replication of the proteins so that's how by utilizing these you are interested to study the interaction of the two different proteins although we are discussing the interaction of the two different proteins but with the help of the electrophoresis you can be able to study the interaction of the two macromolecules where there will be a change in the mass and these uh, step uh, these complexes are fairly stable so that they will not get departed when you are performing the electrophoresis or when you are performing the different steps so if the st if the complexes are very stable if the complexes are resulting into the increase in mass then you can be able to utilize the uh, electrophoresis the you the in the experimental design we can design the two different types of experiment depending on the type of infrastructure you have in your laboratory the type of resources you have in the laboratory so in the approach one or the experimental design one what you can do is you can take the protein a and the dna polymerase clone them separately and then you incubate them in an in vitro reaction to form the complex a dna polymerase now now the information of the complex ab can be analyzed on a native page once the complex is formed there will be a shift of the band position in comparison to the individual protein band so what you have to do is you take the protein a you take the dna polymerase and load it onto a native page so if these two are interacting which means the protein a or the protein b is interacting they are actually going to form the complex of ab so these two individually are small in number or they are individually are not going to form a complex when they will come together they are actually going to form a large complex which means the molecular weight of this are going to be small whereas the molecular weight of the ab complex is going to be on a higher side so if you load them into a native page what will happen is that the protein a will run at per its own molecular weight the protein b is going to be run as per its own molecular weight but the protein ab complex if the complex is formed then it is actually going to be run as per the addition of the protein a and protein b which means for example if you have a protein a of 40 kilo dalton protein b is 20 kilo dalton then this will become the 60 kilo dalton and that's how the the electrophoretic mobility of the complex is going to be on a on a slower side that's why the electrophoretic mobility of the complex is going to be uh, it will run slowly and that's how it is actually going to be away from the a and b as a as a verification if you are interested to verify this what you can do is you can be able to add the urea or some denaturating agent and that actually should give you the uh, the band of the a and b back so that is a kind of a verification experiments uh, that that the complex is actually having the a and b together other way of verifying the complex is that you can take the complex and then instead of uh, before adding the b for example if you take the a and you add the b what you can do is just simply add the antibodies so that it is actually going to bind all the regions available in a to 
for which is available for the B. So, as a, as a result of the antibodies, the B will not get the suitable site for the A to bind and as a result, it is not going to form the complex. So, there are multiple ways in which you can be able to design the experiment and then you can be able to verify that approach. Uh, now, let us go to the next design where you can address the same questions. So, in the approach 2, the protein A is resolved onto the SDS page and transferred onto the nitrocellulose membrane. The membrane is then blocked with the 1 percent BSA overnight at 4 degree. Nitrocellulose membrane is incubated with the DNA polymerase or the protein B overnight at 4 degree. The membrane is washed with the buffer and probed with the NTB antibodies followed by the HRP coupled secondary antibodies. The blot is developed by the diaminobenzidine DAP. So, in the approach to what you are going to do is first you resolve the protein A and approach 2 is only going to work when, there, when the protein A and the protein B are actually forming a very stable complex where the three dimensional structure of the A is not playing a role in forming the complex. Because if the three dimensional structure is forming and it is playing a role and it is providing a scaffold which is actually being attached, which is actually being utilized by the B to bind, then this approach is not going to work. Then you have to go with the approach number 1. Uh, so, if the three dimensional structure is not important, but the surface chemistry or the uh, smaller regions of the three dimensional structure is important, then this approach could work. So, what you are going to do is just first run the protein A onto a SDS page. So, it will going to form a band, then what you do is transfer it onto a nitrocellulose membrane and that actually is going to have the protein onto the membrane. Then you block it and you block it so that all other surface area of this particular membrane is going to be blocked so that the protein when you are going to add the protein B, it should not bind to other places. And then you add the protein B. So, if the protein B will have two options, either it will go and bind to the protein A or it will not bind. So, if it will not binding, then it is not going to give you a binding of the antibody as well. So, then in that case, the secondary antibody also will not bind. So, suppose the protein B binds to the protein A, then you wash. So, that washing will remove the non-specific protein B, which is bound to the other region of this membrane and the you add the NTB antibodies. So, NTB antibodies are only going to detect the protein B. Only thing what you have to worry about is that the NTB antibody should not detect the A because if it detects the A, then it is actually going to give you the false results, which means it is actually going to give you the result, uh, the band at where the A is present, whereas the B is not present. So, if the NTB is the whatever the NTB uh, you are going to use should not have any cross reactivity to the A protein. Now, what you do is you do the simple western blotting and you are going to develop the blot with the help of the diaminobenzidine and that actually is going to give you a stain at the same place where you have the protein A. And as I said, because you, you are utilizing a antibody, you can also run the B separately to know where the B is appearing because the position of the B is going to be different from the position of A. Number 3, you can also run the protein A and directly probe that with the uh, anti uh, with the anti B so that you will know that the anti B does not react with the uh, 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 protein A. So, these are the uh, the verifications and the control experiment which you are going to do to see that the result what you are getting are authentic and they are reliable. Now, uh, apart from this, you can also use the SDS page to detect the different types of protein modifications. For example, you can use the detect the glycoproteins, the proteins where the glucose molecules are attached or you can use it for the phosphoprotein detections. So, in these cases what you are going to do, you are going to run the proteins onto the SDS page 
and then you can use the uh, specifically you know reagents to detect the glycoprotein for example in the case of glycoprotein you can use you can just stain the gel with the uh, uh, periodic acid shift base or the pass reagent and that pass reagent is only going to react with the carbohydrates and that actually is going to give you the reactivity and it is going to give you the reactivity next to the protein where the protein is present in the SDS phase. Similarly, we have the specific reagents for the uh, detecting the phosphoprotein as well. Uh, apart from that, if you want to detect the phosphoproteins, you can also be detected by simply by incubating the protein with the 32P labeled and then you can do the arteriodiography utilizing the X-ray films and that actually is going to give you the signal wherever you have the uh, your protein present in the SDS. Apart from these experiments, uh, the so let us let us take up the another example of research problem. So, in the next research problem what you have is that a PhD student cloned a protein in yeast expression system and he is not getting very good over expression of the protein. Now, he wants to optimize several factors responsible for over expression, but wants to complete the task by looking at the molecular weight instead of going through the lengthy task of western blotting please help him to design the appropriate experiment so what is the problem is that a phd student have cloned a particular protein and it is over expressing in the yeast expression system and he does not have the uh, very good resources so that he can be able to perform the western blotting and you know and he, uh, on the other hand he all, he just simply want to optimize the expression so that so he also wants to do the things in a quicker mode because when you do the western blotting, western blotting is a lengthy procedure where uh, you have multiple steps. So, that is how you want, he want to do the things very in a quickly mode. So, he is looking for the uh, to see the staining procedure. So, which is actually going to be much sensitive compared to the Kamasi billion blue and that is how it, he can use that sensitive uh, method to know whether he is getting a protein of that particular molecular weight in the gel or not and whether if it optimizes the different factors for example, if he optimizes the induction uh, time or induction uh, concentrations or concentration of the inducers and all that, whether that is changing the appearances of that particular molecular weight or not. So, one of the appropriate uh, technique for this is that he can actually stain the, uh, the gel with a much sensitive the silver staining. So, let us discuss about that. So, silver staining is a uh, 5 to 100 times more sensitive than the Comasi billion blue R250 stain but this is the third is not compatible with the downstream mass spectrometry applications. The material what you required for the silver staining is that you required a SDS page where you have actually resolved the samples. Then you require a fixing solutions A. The fixing solution A contains the ethanol as well as the acetic acid. Then you require the fixing solution B which requires the ethanol and the different concentration of the acetic acid. Then you require the 0.5 molar sodium acetate uh, in 1 percent glutaldehyde. And then you require the 0.05 percent naphthalene sulfonic acid and then you require the ammonium silver nitrate solutions, citric acid developing solutions and then ultimately you require stop solution. So, stop solution contains the 5 percent risk containing 2 percent acetic acid and then you require a plastic or the glass container where you are going to perform the silver staining and ultimately you are also require a platform shakers where you are actually going to mix these reagents. Before you, is, you we are going to discuss about the protocol of the silver staining, you should remember that they are going to deal with the silver solutions and silver is a very, very toxic solution. So, when you perform these experiments or when you perform the silver staining, you, you always have to wear the gloves and you also have to keep changing the gloves. For example, if you are doing some experiment and you are doing the silver staining and suppose you remove the gloves, you should not wear the same gloves back because when you are touching these glass, when you are touching the, uh, the gels, the silver comes on your gloves. So, when you remove it, 
it goes into the inner surface of the gloves and when you wear it again the old gloves it actually goes into your hand and silver is a very very toxic uh, metal so it goes into your skin very fast and that is how it is actually going to start showing the toxic uh, effects maybe not in one procedure or one type one time one time uh, staining procedures but when you are doing this on a routine basis uh, you might be accumulating a large quantity of silver silver in your uh, in your body and that actually is going to be detrimental for your life so that's why you have to keep all these precaution when you are doing the silver staining apart from that whatever the uh, the washing uh, buffers and whatever the things will come out from this experiment has to be collected in a bottle so that you you remove the silver and throw that into the river or in your sink you cannot simply sink uh, throw all these into the sink because then you are contaminating the environment with the, uh, the silver solutions and that is very very uh, dangerous for the aquatic animals and as well as for the plants. So while you are doing the experiment you have to be very very careful in terms of protecting yourself as well as the protecting the environment. So in the procedure first you remove the page gel from the glass plate and wash it with the deionized water this is required so that you can be able to remove the large chunk of the SDS then you remove the water and fix the gel in the following manner you first fix it in a fixing solution one for one hour uh, then you fix it for two hours to overnight in a fixing solution B and then you wash it with the deionized water and then you incubate it in the 0.05 percent uh, 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 sodium acetate containing glutaldehyde this is also a fixative uh, which you are going to use ultimately you wash the gels with the DNI's water and then you are going to incubate gel in a 5 to 10 uh, gel volume of 0 0.05 percent naphthalene disulfonic acid for 30 minutes this is actually going to be an activator which is actually going to activate the protein so that it actually going to uh, start accepting the uh, uh, the silver then you wash the DNA's water and then you stain the gel with the freshly prepared ammonium ammonical silver nitrate solution. So this is a silver nitrate solution which actually where from where the when because you have treated the proteins with the activating uh, buffer the protein are now going to accept the silver atoms so the, as a result the silver whatever is present into the ammonium chloride uh, the silver nitrate solutions will go and precipitate wherever the protein is present and then what you do is you wash the it with the deionized water develop the gel with the citric acid containing solutions and development will continue until the appearance of the band so at this stage you can keep the pro the gel in a citric acid solution and the citric acid solution is going to be keep reacting with the uh, the protein bound silver atoms and it will be keep giving you some color and you can keep observing the uh, the color and whenever you think that okay you got the uh, sufficient color in your gel then you can just simply wash the gel and remove the developing solution and stop the reaction with the stopping solution that is a 5 percent trace containing 2 percent acetic acid ultimately you wash the gel with the DNA water and you can actually do the imaging of this particular gel to, uh, to, to analyze the image and then you will be able to know whether the band of your interest is appearing into the, that. The result what you are going to get is very simple the silver staining gives the brown color band and the number of band appear will be much more than the commercially brilliant stain gel. So what you can see is these are the same identical gel uh, which we have stained with the help of the commercially brilliant blue as well as we have stained the same with the silver staining. What you see is the number of bands are very little compared to the number of bands what is appearing into a silver staining. All these bands are brown in color and they are much more in number compared to the Comasi Brilliant Blue stain samples. Irrespective of whether you are staining the gel with the Comasi Brilliant Blue or the silver staining, you are always going to see different types of abnormality in the appearances of these bands. For example, you can see the appearance of this particular band. So ideally, you should see a band which is like this. But in these bands, 
does not appear or sometimes you see the band which is a thin band but these are the ideal bands you never get these kind of band uh, because you always do the uh, running at a very fast speed or some kind of uh, artifacts appeared into the gel so because of that when you stain the gel you are going to see different types of the abnormalities in the band appearances let's see how what are these bands so the first is the most common is the smiling of the band so uneven heating of the gel causes the differential migration of the protein with the outermost lane moving slower than the middle lane so the smiley means this is actually a typical smiley fashion of a protein a band it could be in a upward direction or in a downward direction which means the proteins are smiling like this or it, the proteins are smiling in a reverse orientations this happens because there is a few protein molecules are running faster the few protein molecules are running slower and because of that it actually forms a lump kind of situations and why it happens it happens because of the uneven heating because the heating normally increases the migrations and what you can do is if you want to correct this is you can do a rapid heat transfer eliminates this defect and can be achieved by filling the lower tank with a buffer until the sample height so you know that the lower tank you have a buffer and in this you are having a cathode chamber so if you fill the lower buffer slightly on a higher side that actually is going to provide the enough cooling and that's how you can be able to avoid the smiling effect then you have the diffuse protein bands the diffuse protein bands of band appears on the page diffuse protein bands pattern can be corrected by the increasing running current by 25 to 50 percent the higher concentration of the or with the higher concentration of the acrylamide then you have the vertical streaks which means you are going to have single band and then you are going to get a like a streak kind of pattern which means the band is going to be a start from here and then you are going to see streak kind of things you are going to see a streak like this uh, the vertical streaking of the protein bands appears due to the overloading of the protein sample it can be corrected by either reducing the amount of the protein sample or running of the gel at a lower current the third is that the protein runs faster than the expected so what happen is that when the some proteins are very very uh, you know charged because you know that the proteins are running from the negative to positive electrode so if they are having the its own positively ch uh, negative charges and you are on the top you are adding the sds so it is actually having the slightly higher charges and because of that it runs faster than its molecular weight so in few cases the migration of the protein is not a proportional to the molecular weight it is either more or less on the gel than the expected place it is due to the unusual very high proportion of the basic or the acidic amino acids so the protein which are have a very very high concentration of acidic amino acids they run very fast the protein which have a very very high concentration of the basic amino acids they run slower than the expected molecular weight and all these effects all these defects actually uh, causes the uh, calculation of their molecular weight and as well as the looking at the, you know the appearances of the uh, these proteins onto the gels then you have the double bands double band means you have uh, two bands instead of uh, one band the appearances of the double band is due to the partial oxidation or the degradation of the protein sample so what happen is that the single protein bands got degraded so that's why you have the two band because this protein got degraded and it is forming a protein of a lower molecular weight and because of that it actually is not that low that it can separate it so it will be like forming a band like this addition of more amount of reducing reagent or preparing a fresh sample will reduce these artifacts then you have the distorted protein bands appearances of distorted or uneven protein band is due to the stacking gel polymerization it can be corrected by increasing the amount of ammonium persulfate or the timid or deaccelerating the stacking gels then you have the lateral spreading lateral spreading means the protein is so you have a lane of this and the protein is appearing like this so it is actually spreading to outside this uh, the lane 
if the protein bands appears laterally spreading it can be avoided by reducing the time between the loading of the sample as well as the running of the gel so these are the some of the artifacts and the problems what you are going to see when you are going to run a sds page and when you stain them with the comasibillion blue or the silver staining these problems can be uh, can be work out, worked out simply by modulating some of the conditions or where you can actually be able to uh, you know change the uh, you know you can increase the buffer or you can make it uh, slower running and all that kind of thing. So, these are the things which you have to consider when you are uh, resolving the sample onto the SDS page. So, with this I would like to conclude our lecture here. In the subsequent lecture we are going to take up few more exciting experiments where we are going to use the electrophoresis as a tool to answer those questions and to solve those questions. And with this I would like to conclude our lecture here, thank you.